Did you know that alcohol was used as makeup? Well, it's not what you think. Originally, the word alcohol referred to a powder and not to a liquid. Let me explain. The word alcohol came from an Arabic word, alcohol or alcool. It referred to a very fine black powder called coal that Egyptian and Arabic women used as an ancient cosmetic eyeliner. In fact, for centuries, it has been widely used all over the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia to darken the eyelids or on the eyelashes as mascara. It is primarily used by women, but some men and children use it as well. Welcome to Wise to the Words, where we delve into the etymology and origin of various English words. If you like this kind of video, please subscribe. And please like the video, it means a lot. It feeds the YouTube algorithm and helps the channel. The all in alcohol is the definite article the, and English writers of the 16th and 17th century mistakenly included the word all in the word alcohol when translating it into English. We see this in many words of Arabic origin when adopted into English. The name Allah in fact means the god. We have words like algebra, algorithm, alchemy, almanac, alcohol, alfalfa, and alloy. In 1615, the writer George Sandus wrote a book about his travels through Turkey and the Middle East, describing what he saw thus. They put between the eyelids and the eye a certain black powder made of a mineral brought of the kingdom of Fez and called alcohol. Most Hello, is Al there? Al? Yeah, Al. Last name, alcoholic? Let me check. Phone call for Al. Alcoholic. Is there an alcoholic here? <laughs> <laughs> but how did a word for a powder eventually come to refer to the liquid alcohol, spirits, liquor, booze, what we know as alcohol today? Well, Here's the story. Eyeliner coal is an extremely fine powder of a substance called antimony stibnite, or black antimony. The Greeks called it stibi because it means mark, probably because it is used to mark the eyes. Stibnite is a sulfide mineral, namely a mineral containing the element sulfur. Pliny, the elder, the Greek naturalist, called it radiophthalmos, or words to that effect. That's a mouthful. Give me a drink. Which means wide eye. Again, probably in reference to its use as a cosmetic eyeliner. The coal or eyeliner is produced by taking the antimony sulfide through the process of sublimation. That is, heat turns the solid mineral directly into vapor, which then deposits back as a dark powder. This powder is technically called antimony trisulfide. It is an extremely fine powder, so fine that to the touch you cannot feel the grains of the powder. In a sense, it was looked upon as a pure powder. Eventually, chemists came to refer to any extremely fine powder as alcohol, as in the powder alcohol of sulfur. In some old books of alchemy, finely powdered iron was called ferrum alcoholizatum, by the 16th century, through this process of sublimation, it was believed that the result had gotten to the essence of the material, the quintessence, the heart of the substance, the spirit of it, as it were. Incidentally, antimony sits near arsenic on the periodic table of elements because it shares many properties such as its toxicity. Being a toxin, it was often used as a medicine throughout the ages. Toxins have antibacterial properties, so it was used as an antiseptic. Perhaps the use of coal around the eyes may have had practical antibacterial uses of protecting the eye from infections. Also, perhaps the black simply protected the eyes from the glare of the sunlight in that dry, arid climate, much like football players put black under the eyes. Some believe Mozart may have accidentally poisoned himself by dosing medications that were antimony-based toxins. By the way, the FDA has banned coal in the USA as unsafe. You fellas been doing a bit of boozing, have you? Sucking back on Grandpa's old cough medicine? No, oh no, sir. No. 
This process of sublimation was eventually extended to liquids in order to get to their essence or their spirit. Chemists, for example, wanted to get to the essence of wine. What was it in wine that caused the intoxication? To alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. The famous 16th century chemist Paracelsus called the spirit which was distilled from wine the alcohol of wine or alcohol vini. Vini eventually dropped off and it was simply alcohol. But it was not until the 19th century that alcohol came to refer to other alcoholic drinks. So this is why we call distilled alcohol spirits. It is the essence, the spirit of what gets you intoxicated. The essence of alcohol, of any alcoholic drinks, of that agent which makes you intoxicated is a molecule called ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Most wines, for example, contain less than 13% ethanol by volume. Distilled spirits, that is whiskey, gin, vodka, etc., usually contain 40 to 50% ethanol. Beer, a mere two to six percent. Sir, no, wait, 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 wait. No, sir, don't, don't drink. You'd keep your mouth shut if you knew it was good for you, buddy. Incidentally, the term whiskey comes from the Gaelic, I can't pronounce that word, and it literally means water of life. And vodka is Russian for a little water. Both probably harken back to the old Latin term for alcohol called aqua vitae, literally the water of life. When you drink vodka, the thing is, is that you have to take a little sippy poos. Little sippy poos. Just little wee sippy poos. You have to drink with the great little liquor. And then after a while, little sippy poos. So now you're wise to the words. I hope you found this explanation of alcohol spirited and intoxicated your curiosity. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please share these videos with a friend. The future, the present and the past walk into a bar. Things got a little tense. To beer or not to beer? That is the question. I do fellow.